You are now listening to the compilation After Dark. Mixed by DJ Raw from Serial Records. Listen and you will be house. House music is a culture, a communion, a celebration. Gathering people to dance, let go, open up through mind, body. Good afternoon, my name is Bruce Montgomery. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Technology Access Television. Well, you know, security and identity has been in the news literally every day. There have been just major issues back and forth with uh, who's who and what's what. And, and, and when companies are making decisions around employees, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made that relate to security and personal information. My guest today is an expert in this area, and I think he can <laughs> shed some light on both sides of the story, both for employers, uh, whoever they might be, government, private sector, public sector, they have to know about who they're bringing into their workforce, but also from the standpoint of the employee. How do you present yourself in the best possible way? Uh, maybe you need to be concerned about all those things you put online out there, because believe you me, it will last forever, and somebody's going to see it, and you want to make sure they understand they're seeing what you want them to see. But believe you me, they will find it wherever it is. <laughs> My guest today is part of that uh, environment that helps bring those things to light. He is the founder and CEO of Kentec. And my guest today is Kenneth Coates. Ken? Hello. How you doing? Man, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I've been wanting to get you on the show for a while, but I guess yes. you've been a busy guy, huh? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, we've been uh, been doing a lot of uh, new launching new products and um, just been excited. You know, excited okay. In the, in tell, tell us how, how you got started. How did you get Kentech up and running? How long has it been? Uh, 2006 when we officially started, but mm -hmm. prior to that, my uh, background is technology. Uh, I used to work for Computer Associates. Uh, prior to that, it was Equifax. And um, I got into it, it was right around the Patriot Act. And okay. it was around a time where info, you know, digital information was not as readily available, but post 9-11, um, the Patriot Act, things like that, Homeland Security, had brought such intense scrutiny on uh, one's background. Wow. And so I had friends and family who knew that I worked there and would ask questions like, well, man, well, you know, how do I fix this? Or what do I do about this? Mm -hmm. And uh, from that point, it, it uh, you know, I guess it gave me an impetus to, to start my own business. All right, all yeah. right. So um, you parlayed your uh, work in corporate Computer America. Mm -hmm. And so when you first, what solutions were you thinking you were going to bring to market? When you first started, did you have yeah. a customer target in mind? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, my first actually uh, venture into entrepreneurship or uh, technology, I own my own technology company, was a product I uh, had called arrestfree.com. Uh -huh. And essentially what that was was taking those, uh, I guess, needs that my uh, friends and family would tell me about, of having you know minor what I call minor blemishes in their background that would perhaps prevent them from getting a job. So I looked into the space and I realized that uh, you know the, you know the the the, the um, I guess the um, solution at the time was just traditionally just going to a lawyer and getting what is called an expungement, which can be you know very uh, costly. Um, and I saw that the process was pretty much a streamlined process where a person can simply uh, just fill out a form. It was similar to like a 1040 easy, if mm -hmm. you will. Uh, so I thought, what if we made a, 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 an engine, if you will, that's called a, a record discovery that will allow a person to pull their own record and then answer simple questions similar to like a TurboTax to fill okay. out the forms. All right. And uh, from that moment, uh, we launched it in, I believe, like 2006, and the idea was born. That's a great idea. Thank That's you. That's a great idea. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I think I even heard about it. I think I told you. Yes. I heard you yeah. maybe speaking about it on the press. Yes. Yeah. And, I, you know, I remember uh, some of the uh, people in the Chicago area when they would have, like, expungement uh, seminars, and there'd be mm -hmm. crowds of people yes. trying to figure out what to do and need to think they need to talk to a lawyer and waiting in long lines just yes. to get in front of somebody uh -huh. to figure out what they could do. So people were so excited when you first invented this application. Yes. It yeah. probably was mm -hmm. the first time mm -hmm. some people said, hey, maybe I need to use a computer or get yes. online to do something. Yeah, it was a very interesting time because it was, uh, the, the, I mean, of course, the Internet was around, but it wasn't as prevalent. We didn't have smartphones, you know, sort of mm -hmm. speak back in the day. So everything was desktop. 
Um, but it did bring a lot of, uh, I guess, interesting nuances, you know, both social, uh, you know, talk, talking about technology and everything. So it, w it, was, uh, it was very interesting and uh, it was a great experience. Now, is the product still around today and, and still being used? We've, um, unfortunately, with that product, we uh, ran into some obstacles. Um, unfortunately, lawyers didn't like what we were doing, <laughs> okay. as you can imagine, um, you know, pretty much pricing them out of the market. So we immediately had to shut down after some lawyers were uh, claiming what they call UPL, or Unauthorized Practice of Law, of uh, offering legal advice if they said that we were doing online. So uh, we had to resort to uh, just providing just record discovery at the point. Okay, Yeah. all right. So then, from that experience of creating a software product, now, mm -hmm. when you uh, came out with that, did you pull your coders and developers together and mm -hmm. uh, actually go through various iterations of creating the software, yes. uh, put that together? And, yes. and that probably was a good experience. Did you find the right talent here in Chicago to help you do that? Uh, both here in Chicago and then also out, outside of Chicago. Okay. Uh, you know, using both um, some overseas developers as well as some friends that I knew to do some of the coding and some right. of the front end. Um, but the market, at the techno lo no technology market, as you know, has is, is gotten much better yes. know, from when I first started. I don't. It wasn't too many people, I believe, trying to launch as much as they are now. Okay. You know, it wasn't an 1871. Right, right. I think Tech Nexus was around at the time, but um, yeah, it's it's a different different era now. Now, a lot of people, of course, are you know, think the computer business is glamorous. Mm -hmm. uh, they see the movies about Mark Zuckerberg. Everybody oh, wants to be yes. a millionaire. Mm -hmm. They hear about 1871. They all want to jump into business. Uh, did mm -hmm. you? Uh, when you started your business, mm -hmm. uh, did you have to basically self-fund it? How, how did you open yes. up your doors? Were, yeah. were there venture capitalists chasing ah, you down the street to give I you money? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I was chasing them down the street to give me some money. But uh, no, uh, it was all self-funded, guerrilla marketing, um, you know, great community uh, outreach. You know, I got involved in a lot of different communities. You mentioned WVO1, WVON, I'm sorry, that was uh, supportive around that time. Uh, but no, it was all self-funded. I basically, you know, as every entrepreneur will do, they, you know, you leave your corporate job and you jump out, <laughs> you jump out there. You're on your own. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. yeah. All mm -hmm. right, so then out of that original success and mm -hmm. the notoriety, mm -hmm. that gave you a little bit of revenue stream. And yes. then you'd mm -hmm. say, okay, we're gonna have to go in another direction. Yes. But you mm -hmm. decide to stick with it. Yeah. And then expand into Kintech and go into, so talk about the range of services. Who, who are your yeah. customers now? Mm -hmm. And what are the broad range of services that you seek to provide for them? Great question. Yeah, after that incident, I believe it was like 2007, 2008, we, we still had a uh, interest in working with the community. We, we realized it was such a huge need for that, uh, that solution in terms of offering alternatives uh, or what I call record relief or expungement. Uh, so at that point, we immediately jumped in and started working with a lot of nonprofits that catered towards, um, I guess, we call like low to moderate income um, um, people who may have had challenges with their records. So we would come in and, and actually offer the op opportunity for them to review their record and okay. from there to pass it on to an attorney or a legal aid clinic that can help them out. Uh, from that point, we launched a couple new products, like reiterations off of a rest free. One was called College Screen. And what we were finding is there were a lot of colleges out there that required their student to, in order for them to matriculate into a um, health program like a hospital, they required drug testing as well as fingerprints and um, background checks. A lot of people don't know that. They yes. probably think, you know, people think, well, when I went to school back in the day, you know, you filled out a form, you showed up on campus, you punched in, you went to your dorm, that was it. Yes. It's not like that anymore. No, unfortunately, or I guess fortunately for our business in, in sort of a way, but uh, yeah, it's much more intense scrutiny, much more liability, um, and the name of the game right now is really to kind of reduce your risks, whether okay. it's a hospital or it's a company organization, as well as the government, of course. Uh, so from there, we've been able to kind of expand in all many markets. We work with any Thing from anybody from a, um, a nonprofit, colleges, uh, casinos. We do a large uh, n a number of businesses for the government in terms of security, uh, background investigations, um, as well as just your regular mom pop. So talk about what goes into a screening. Mm -hmm. um, people probably think that mm -hmm. you have access to um, the NSA right. <laughs> uh, right. library and, yes. and you yeah. go in there like uh, <laughs> one of the shows on cable and you 
tap a few buttons and all of a sudden you see mm -hmm. everything. Uh, yeah. It's really not like that. But yeah. what is it like when you go and do a screen to determine what somebody's profile is all about? Good question. It depends on the industry, but typically at the heart of it, it's all looking at criminal information. So whether it's for an employer or if it's for a landlord or if it's due diligence for a, a company, um, the, the most, I guess, common element is always looking at the uh, criminal activity. So it has that person, is this person ex murder that I'm letting in, you know, to exaggerate that um, type of example. Uh, and then from there, it can kind of span on. So whether or not you say you graduated from Harvard, uh, you know, with a PhD, you know, we're checking that out. We're going to mm -hmm. verify that. We're going to speak with your former employers, uh, get some professional references, just to kind of get a sense of who this person is and everything that they presented on that resume is true and accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, have you seen over the last um, five or six years that you started to do this, is this now more in demand and increasingly being used by a broader diversity of people who want to do this kind of background activity? Yes, uh, I, I found I find it with most small businesses. Some think that it's illegal. Like, oh man, can you find that? Is that legal to do? You know, it's kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting, um, but I do see there there has been an, an uptick, if you will. You know, unfortunately, as you mentioned in the um, news now, all you hear is about a security, the Edward Snowden issue. Mm -hmm. There was a, a large uh, private contractor who was responsible for doing that background check, and uh, you find that uh, everyone is concerned, and even on a consumer end, you know, with uh, online dating, uh, social networks, you know, you name it. When it comes to safety. Uh, people are more just concerned about the information that's out there and ensuring that they're, they, I guess they're going in with. Uh, so what open. role can, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I look somebody up on LinkedIn, I mm -hmm. look somebody up on Facebook, mm -hmm. I think I know what they're about. Yes. Well, that really doesn't tell you anything. That right. tells you what they put out yes, there. Yes, and yes, And none of that can, in fact, needs, there's no error checking or fact checking on LinkedIn or right. on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere else. Yes. Where, what, what can consumers do mm -hmm. when they want to find out if the person they are talking to or connected mm -hmm. to is, is who they say they are? What are some of the databases or mm -hmm. sources that might be available that provide some Cooperation of public information. Great, great question. I would say the the main one, if if it's for like a babysitter, uh, anything like that, there is a free website that people can use. It's the uh, National Sex Offender Registry. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's it's nsorp.gov. I believe uh, that's a huge one you want to check. Um, you can always go down to your uh, courthouse at this time. I believe. Out of the 3,300 counties in the U.S., maybe 40% of them make their uh, information available online. Mm -hmm. So you can always uh, go to your local courthouse if you have some information or check online to see if it's available uh, to, to look up certain information on a person. Now, a lot of people are concerned today certainly about their uh, financial affairs, and mm -hmm. there are people are rightly concerned about mm -hmm. uh, credit activity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, on television, on the radio, all these firms... Uh, market yes. uh, credit checks and, oh, and these yes. types of things and there's mm -hmm. a lot of variance mm -hmm. in what some of these people are doing yes uh, some yeah. are uh, above board and they charge <laughs> a fee and you know what you're getting into yeah. others seem like they're they're after your credit card as much as yeah. somebody else so yes. mm -hmm. uh, when we think about the credit reporting services mm -hmm. and trying to monitor what's out there in those databases uh, mm -hmm. Uh, TransUnion, Equifax, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, what what opportunities do consumers have for seeing how they appear mm -hmm. uh, in those databases? Uh, what should be promoted most uh, is the um, the availability for a person to get their credit for free. If they go to annualcreditreport.com, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to use. I think the big one out there is, I believe, I don't want to give a plug. One of those free names. Yes, right, yes, right. yeah. Those are the really not they're not free at all. No. And in fact, you know, that's it's just a marketing ploy, you know, mm -hmm. to get a person in to sign them up with an endless subscription and not really get what you want. But, <laughs> okay. um, yeah. but you can get it yourself yes. by going to a source that will pull from mm -hmm. the main reporting agencies and give you a snapshot of wh what your status is. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And your credit report dot com is the big one. You can get it from all three. Um, by law, I, I believe the uh, federal government passed it and uh, uh, the law that requires that each uh, of the major three credit bureaus, uh, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, make it available for consumers on an annual basis. So you had a background in computer technology. You mm -hmm. also had marketing savvy to see mm -hmm. how some of these things were opening up. 
as you start to scale your business to the next level, mm -hmm. what are some of the uh, challenges and opportunities you see mm -hmm. for how big this business can get? Uh, what, are, what are some of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, SWOT analysis, yes, if you will, yes. of what can open this thing up to really make it go? Well, we're really uh, right now focused in the B2B and the B2G market. Uh, we're in the process, though we're excited about a new project we just launched called EnoID, and it's it's primarily taking those best tools that we normally offer to just employers and to uh, some of our government clients and now making it available for the consumer. Mm. Uh, we are a licensed private detective agency. We have uh, several offices across the U.S. right now, and we feel that there's a huge opportunity uh, when it comes to um, for consumers and then also for like social networks. So for consumers, one of the challenges that we've seen is that a lot of um, a lot of our um, clients, after they use us to run a background check, they have to you know unfortunately if it's some derogatory information. Uh, that applicant most time is left in the dark. They don't realize that that information is out there. So one thing that we thought we would do is make uh, the same tools that we're giving the HR, you know, we'll make it available for the consumer. So it's called EnoID. Uh, online dating is huge as well, as I mentioned. And there was a product called Checkmate. So whether you are getting a, a roommate or if it's somebody you met online that you can check them out. And then also, which is very, you know, kind of dear to our heart, is uh, the nanny check. You know, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, a lot of the companies that offer the baked-in background checks, if you will, for babysitting, we find that there are so many holes in terms of uh, information not being picked up, uh, and, it, and and I think it creates a risk. You know, not only well, of course, for the company, but also for that mom or dad who was relying on this information to, you know, hire the sitter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, again, us being private detective agents, uh, private detective agents now, we hire, you know, former law enforcement, former FBI, and we kind of go through the information and, and take it a little bit more in depth beyond just the, the surface stuff. So in, in this environment where all of this data is out there, personal financial information, credit information, work history, education history, uh, social activity, there's this new term emerging called mm -hmm. reputation management. Oh, yes. As mm -hmm. well as, uh, mm -hmm. so different firms like yours are yes. coming out mm -hmm. saying, we can help you know yeah, yeah. what's out there yes. in these databases about you. And because people can find that there is a, I heard a story the other day from a friend of mine who's a, a very high level person in the uh, technology employment area. He's got hundreds of mm -hmm. software developers working for him. And it was a friend of his who was trying to get a employment who he knew was very, very skilled, mm -hmm. but he couldn't get in anywhere. He had been out of work for two or three years. And so mm -hmm. he, he had, and this friend of mine had referred him to several places, knew he was very competent, programmed backwards and forwards, had all kind of talent, mm -hmm. but he just wasn't getting picked up by anybody. So the friend said, well, let me just do a little checking. And he went and found mm -hmm. that there was some activity in Twitter oh, wow. that was extremely negative. Right. And it was attributed to this guy and he didn't even know it was out there. Right. So somebody, yes. uh, so then he told a friend, he said, hey man, do you know this stuff is out here? Mm -hmm. He didn't have a clue. Wow. So it turns out that somebody had tweeted some uh, derogatory information, not even about this guy, uh -huh. tweeted it to him and he inadvertently passed it on. Hmm. So it was being tracked back to him and he wasn't even the author oh, wow. of the original information. So my point is, yes. there is digital dirt yes. <laughs> that yes. could be out there. Yeah. Not even true, right? Not even connected about you. Mm -hmm. But if it's in your uh, Twitter stream, in yes. this case, or mm -hmm. some other things, so now, and, and you know, so many people that do not use uh, technology or social media on a regular basis, mm -hmm. so they may have set up a LinkedIn account or Twitter account, but they don't even look at it. Right? They play around with it for a little while, mm -hmm. and so maybe somebody sends them a. A YouTube link or a tweet or something that says, oh, yeah, so-and-so's a jerk. Right. And you think, ha, 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 you pass along. <laughs> you even looked at the damn thing. Uh -huh. And now, all of a sudden, this could be something that could be a problem. So yes. this whole arena mm -hmm. of reputation management and mm -hmm. people needing to make sure what is out there yes. and, and need to know about that. So that is that the kind of direction you guys are going in yes. to help people, you know, Make sure that things that are out there are, in fact, accurate. I mean, you hit on a great point I, right now. I, I call them digital profiles, mm -hmm. and it's totally, you know, it's almost like an entirely different idea of who that person is, you know, that, that, that lives online. And it's, uh, you know, it's collecting a massive amount of uh, information, you know, that can be linked to you, good or bad. 
Um, in fact, I seen a post somewhere. I believe it was um, it was one of the online blogs, and it it showed the top ten mistakes a person uh, did to lose a job, and it was everything from uh, Congressman Weiner, you know, with his Craigslist piece, to uh, I think there was one on uh, a couple other companies, but. Um, yeah, it's 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 detrimental, and I think it's vital for a person to kind of keep that in mind, especially when you're going for a job to make sure you're not standing, uh, you, you know, not too many pictures that are publicly available of you with your friends, you know, having chugging down a beer, because employers will look at that information. Mm. Yeah. So it, it, this is really interesting because this is, um, you know, this is as much about technology, but it's really about information. Yes. It's about data. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you make me think that there have been companies mm -hmm. like TransUnion here in Chicago that, mm -hmm. you know, grew very large in this space. Mm -hmm. Equifax grew very large in this space. Mm -hmm. So the processing of information has always been a, a separate business. It's not about mm -hmm. the computers. Right. It's about the data. The information. It's about the information. It's yes. even about the knowledge. Yes. Can we derive uh, valuable insights from this? And so mm -hmm. as Kentec begins to emerge as a solution provider, mm -hmm. what are some of the skills that you need in your employees? Uh, mm -hmm. What Obviously, you have people that may be coders or yes. developers working for you. Uh, what other kind of talent do you see coming into your organization as it grows over the next couple of years? You know, the big term now you hear is big data, you know, big data, uh, everything. And as you mentioned, now we, we are in the information age mm -hmm. and, you know, aggregating that information is one thing, but being able to make intelligent decisions based on what that information is. So, um, you know, as always, you're looking for people that are bright, not necessarily uh, they don't have to be engineers, but I think able to think out of the box and ask some of those simple questions in terms of, um, you know, what is important? What does this data mean? Are there trends or anything that we need to kind of proactively measure against what we see? Um, one huge thing now that we're seeing in our industry to kind of combat, unfortunately, when a person is, I guess, erroneously accused of a, of a crime and, you know, do not get a job, um, there's a lot of compliance and regulation, whether it's EEOC uh, or there's a new board now that I know that the federal government has made uh, it's important for a person to take into consideration the types of records and whether or not that record is uh, can be considered. So I think thinking out of the box, thinking of new ideas and new solutions, as opposed to just offering the data as a service, but actually offering it as, as a solution. I, I heard uh, uh, one of our senators, uh, U.S. senators the other day, in speaking to some high school students, make the comment that uh, these are very different times. Mm -hmm. He said that he, like a lot of young people, did some things that uh, probably were not too smart back yes. in the day. But mm -hmm. but back in his day, mm -hmm. there wasn't any Facebook. There wasn't mm -hmm. any social media. There wasn't somebody pulling out a camera, <laughs> taking a picture or whatever. Yes. He said he would not have been too proud yes. of any of that. Yeah. And so the, the message is that young people today mm -hmm. have to be much more cautious. Yes. Uh, you know, don't just think that I can act crazy in mm -hmm. high school or college and once I get out of school it doesn't matter right uh, unfortunately some of that stuff could stick around because uh, certain uh, activities today may end up in producing um, uh, not only misdemeanors but right. something much higher yes that could in fact be on a criminal record that could last for a while yes so mm -hmm. these are uh, guideposts mm -hmm. we could be upset about it mm -hmm. but it's not going away right is going to be here yes. and is creating opportunities for businesses like yours. But I'm so glad that you made the point that so many people think that to be involved in the a growing world of technology and big data and informa information management, mm -hmm. that everybody has to be a, uh, a University of Chicago PhD yes. in computer science and physics <laughs> and work in Argon Labs. It's not true. Right. People can have marketing backgrounds. They can have psychology backgrounds. They can mm -hmm. have backgrounds in education and law enforcement, mm -hmm. but yet be a part of a collective team like Kentech, yes. helping to define products that can add value to both consumers and to the clients that you guys serve. So we need more people mm -hmm. to look at the fields of information management and technology mm -hmm. that can bring to it different disciplines, yes. not just coding disciplines or uh, scientific disciplines, but people that think about the human impact. Oh, yes, certainly. I think even from the creative realm, my background is actually mu music. Okay. And, and if you would ask me 10 years or even 15 years ago, I'd be 
you know, running a background investigation technology company. <laughs> I would have thought it was unheard of, but um, they were so, I guess, parallel in terms of music and, and the creativity and, and actually getting into technology at the time that I did, um, that it's, it's, so, it's so essential. And, you know, everyone loves to quote Steve Jobs, but, um, you know, his big deal was, you know, bridging technology and humanity in a way. And I think that's what made them so successful, what make them so successful is that understanding. Well, you're absolutely right. In fact, uh, you make me think of there was a professor, uh, African-American professor mm -hmm. at Northwestern mm -hmm. who um, taught there for many years and then subsequently um, uh, got involved in some government consulting, mm -hmm. ended up establishing a, um, a consulting business in D.C. And he was asked to handle a little project uh, for the National Science Foundation. And National Science Foundation says uh, that they wanted to begin to make internet technology available to a broader public and they want to be able to use uh, email and create public email addresses. And would his firm mm -hmm. do the research on how best to make that happen? Hmm. And he did that research and actually uh, is the inventor, if you will, of the at sign uh, wow. and the dot com. So the dot in dot com, which would provide a way for the email function to work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bruce at Yahoo yes. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. he was the person who came up with that. So much like mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. uh, he had a background, uh, not necessarily in technology, but right. knew a lot about it. But because of his skill and being kind of at the right place at the right time, right. Uh, his business was the first company to manage the bringing of internet uh, to the broader public because it had been wow. available in uh, schools and universities and research institutions, but, but not. Uh, so there are many uh, African-Americans like yourself mm -hmm. that have played very significant roles mm -hmm. in the development of technologies being broadly utilized. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't get uh, a lot of visibility. Yes. For those of you watching this show, if you mm -hmm. wanna know more about that story, please send me an email or something. <laughs> I'll be happy to provide you more detail about it. But it's been delightful here talking to uh, Ken Coates, uh, founder of a company that's doing some wonderful things in this area. And while this is an area that causes a lot of concern, it is an area that also creates some opportunity, both for entrepreneurs, but also for those of us that want to manage in information uh, a little bit better. So, Ken, as yes. we uh, wrap up our conversation today, mm -hmm. what would, 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 would you want uh, people can actually come to your website? Yes. And if they want to know more about protecting their privacy, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of information is out there? I know you have a wonderful website, oh, by the way. Oh, thank you. We just launched uh, it. What was your website address again? It's uh, ekentech.com. So E as in electronic and kentech, K-E-N-T-E-C-H.com. And where did that Ken come from? I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was, yeah. <laughs> but again, my hat's off to you. You got Thank a wonderful, you. wonderful website, a Thank wonderful you. business. Glad yeah. to see you growing and prospering here in the Chicago area. Yes. Uh, hopefully, you're going to get uh, so big uh, mm -hmm. that, that those v VCs are going to say, we should have gave that guy some money. <laughs> right. If we would have gave that guy some money. So I'm going to look up. You're going to be on Shark Tank. You're going to be one of the yeah. sharks. Oh, oh, man, I would love it. I would love it. <laughs> Hey, it's been wonderful to have this conversation with uh, Ken Tech. It's been wonderful for you to be a part of this conversation at Technology Access Television. We appreciate each and every one of you. Have any questions at all, write us, call us. You can find us everywhere. We'll be happy to support your increase in technology awareness. My name is Bruce Montgomery. This is another edition of Technology Access Television. No borders. You can listen to house music from New York to San Francisco, Detroit to London. Tokyo to Paris. House Music represents.